this is the ASMR medic. I hope you're well. We're going to be covering the, uh, the liver today. We're going to draw it. I'm uh, I'm excited about that. It's a it's a fascinating organ, a fascinating system. Probably one of my favourites, if not my favourite. I'm a big fan of the the brain and the uh, and the heart. I'm quite mainstream in that sense. <laughs> but yeah, I thought we'd just. Uh, jump on over to uh, teachmeanatomy.info I've, uh, I've talked about that in the past a little bit it's a great resource for uh, learning anatomy so I thought I'd make use of it today I've uh, got my coffee in front of me The liver is a uh, quite complicated, quite complicated organ, but worth working at. So let's just uh, let's just jump straight in, shall we? I decided to go with a, a black background today. Switch it up a little bit. So we'll use uh, white as our kind of guiding guiding line when drawing. Of a vague shape of the uh, of the liver. We went over it in my lectures a good good uh, good while ago, but um, it's definitely time for me to go back over it again. So we'll have a little read through the uh, initial kind of uh, information on Teach Me Anatomy. I'll link the website down below in the description if you're interested. So it's always good to get an idea of where these structures are based, especially in the body, before you crack on with exactly what it looks like, or, you know, um, the specific anatomical structures of that organ or system. So that's why the first part of this contents page is anatomical position. So let's get into that. So, as part of the introduction, it says, the liver is a peritoneal organ. Now the peritoneum is a uh, is an area within the body, within the uh, your thorax of your body. You have your uh, your uh, your kind of your upper body. That's not an uh, an anatomical term that we use, but just for reference, we use uh, it is within the upper body, the thorax is the area that is supplied by the thoracic 1, 2, 3, down to 12 vertebra which is below the cervical and above the lumbar so that's inferior to the cervical so we'll just draw this out you have your body like this facing this way the eyes are here your mouth is there down to roughly about here is this cervical region. I think there are... Hmm. I think there's seven. It's either five or seven. You can look that up. It's not really the point of this, but it's just to get a spatial idea of where the liver is within the body. And then from here, down to about here, is what we call the thoracic. And so usually people would associate the thorax with, um, with maybe insects, they've got a, you know, that, that kind of uh, thoracic part of their body. We wouldn't really say that we have a thorax, we would just say the main body, the trunk of our body. 
but this is what we call the thoracic region in terms of uh, in terms of the nervous system and that's thoracic 1 to 12 make that a little bit thicker shall we thoracic 1 to 12 
elements that come off it. It's attached to many different structures, including the stomach, kind of uh, medially to it, but also slightly inferiorly. The lungs, of course. But as it says, it's also the largest gland in the human body. An accessory digestion gland. The liver performs a wide range of functions, including the synthesis of bile. And that's done through the bile duct, or the biliary gland, which is an attached, kind of an accessory part of it. <clears throat> Glycogen storage, which is hugely, hugely important for uh, energy metabolism. And clotting factor production, which obviously is involved in the clotting of blood, through the clotting cascade. In this article, we shall look at the anatomy of the liver, its position and structure, and neurovascular supply. So, the anatomical position. The liver is predominantly located in the right hypochondrium. And so here you have the hypochondrium. These are the upper hypochondriums, and over here we have the hyperchondriums. Chondrium, really referring to uh, sorry, just uh, make sure that's not too loud for you. The uh, hypochondriums. This is what refers to these. Um, I think you might you might have some middle layers as well. Obviously, uh, it's been completely, the surface fascia has been completely removed to a degree. I think. 
think it's called the ligament and teres. I might be wrong in saying that. That might be one attaches to the stomach. But there is a, a ligament that attaches the liver to the stomach. And it's key. Very important anatomical structure. And very important in terms of surgery. Locating it is hugely, hugely important. So, here, let's take away that arrow. You have the right lobe. And so we know that it splits into the right see that there are these two angles. These are also quite important. This one and this one. This one is associated directly with the liver. And this one is associated with the stomach. So two angles or two curves It is, it is to do with the liver. I think it's the curve of the liver. The, the hmm. Essentially, their names relate to the fact that they're associated. One, the, the right hand side, the right curve or the right angle um, is associated with the liver, the left associated with the stomach. I'm sure of it. But again, not massively important. Directly, direct relations to the liver. But interesting things to note. So, Let's move on. Ah, yes, and you've got the gallbladder. Literally right underneath the liver. And so we can uh, we can label these. Let's do it in interesting brown, shall we? 
also um, labels the duodenum, which is part of the digestive tract, or the alimentary tract as we know it. The alimentary tract going from the mouth all the way to the other end, through our stomach. <coughs> Is, is debatable whether you can call it really a separate structure from the stomach or the intestine, but it definitely is an intermediary uh, structure, and it's just there. There is a kind of school of thought that you could directly include it with the small in, small intestine, small bowel. with the exception of the fossa of the gallbladder, fossa meaning uh, a depression, and porta hepatis, which is a, a, a vessel that runs between the, uh, I think it's between the liver and the kidneys. Obviously it's related to the, to the, to the, to the liver, hepatic. Anyway. It is covered with the exception of the fossa of the gallbladder and porta hepatis. It is covered with peritoneum. So there are areas that are not covered with this peritoneum. Peritoneum. 
name being that um, fascial lever um, um, layer that I was telling you about. It is molded by the shape of the surrounding organs, making it irregular and flat. It lies in contact with the right kidney, right adrenal gland, right colic flexure, transverse colon. also in contact with the right kidney, the right adrenal gland which is uh, kind of attached to the kidney, the transverse colon which we've, uh, did we label it? No we didn't, let's label it shall we, this, the part of the large bowel that runs transversely across the body underneath the stomach and the liver, so part of it is associated with the liver.
every edge of this ligament contains ligament the, uh, <laughs> the free edge of this ligament contains the ligamentum teres a remnant of the umbilical vein <clears throat> now it seems like I am talking more nonsense than I think but with the ligamentum teres I know that, that um, in Latin means uh, the round ligament and it's because it is usually the, um, a vestigial so something that was present in development, but then becomes uh, essentially useless past adolescence, past at least past uh, neonatal stages, and so it kind of fibroses slightly and becomes and stops being a vessel and becomes uh, a type of a ligament. But yeah. Anyway, the coronary ligament. You may uh, have heard of the word coronary. It means crown usually refer to things to do with the heart. So this ligament is an anterior and posterior fold. <coughs> and it attaches the superior surface of the liver to the inferior surface of the diaphragm. And to become demarcates the bare area of the liver. So it attaches the superior surface of the liver to the inferior surface of the diaphragm. left triangular ligament is formed by the union of the anterior and posterior layers of the coronary ligament at the apex of the liver. This is the apex of the liver, I'm pretty sure this bit here, but apex of it. So this diagram is getting very messy now, isn't it? And attaches the left lobe of the liver to the the triangular ligament is formed in a similar fashion adjacent to the bare area and attaches the right lobe of the liver to the diaphragm. Mm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. The lesser omentum. Now I know about the greater omentum, which I can tell you about, but uh, anyway. This attaches the liver to the lesser curvature stomach. If this is the stomach, kind of shaped like this. So, if you think about your alimentary tract, it's just a long tube. That is, so this is where your mouth is, and this is the, uh, well, this is the other end. <laughs> During development, all that our digestive system is from the top to the bottom is a kind of folding and thinning of certain areas. So you'd buy the mouth. It's quite thin, roughly, where the esophagus is. And it comes down and down and down into the stomach. Then it bulges out during development. Then it comes around, twists and turns through the duodenum into the small bowel. 
see from the uh, from the stomach, it's quite an asymmetrical shape. This is the lesser curvature of the stomach. Because, it, as you can see, it's one of the curves of the stomach, but it's the, the smaller side is superior. huge overhanging of kind of fleshy, ligamentous material. It's very, very fatty. It's all knobbly. It's kind of, when you open it, you think, blimey, something is wrong with this person, which is kind of what I thought when I had my dissections. I thought, what is that huge structure that kind of just hangs up? Like it's, it's not even, other than its attachment to the, to the greater curvature of the stomach, it's not a Attaches the liver of the lesser curvature, the liver to the lesser curvature 
turns to the heart from the rest of the body. You have your superior vena cava, which which um, drains the upper part of the body and your inferior or below the heart, should I say? So the head, uh, the arms, so on. But the um, inferior vena cava, which obviously is inferior. So let's say that you have your heart. Let's just draw your heart. I'm not going to do it. Let's just draw it like this. Your heart. <laughs> in here. So all of your deoxygenated blood, which is usually, usually 